Finally, Hurricane Katrina displaced thousands of people years ago, and recently Tammy Arinder met one who decided Music City would be a great place to continue her art career. So here she is in Music City with her husband, her son. Oh, and for her artwork, well, a whole slew of shoes. Melanie Guyon's home gets lots of foot traffic. There's very little loafing around unless you can count the loafers that have been turned into pieces of art. As an artist for the House of Blues, Melanie went from painting murals on the walls to painting shoes to hang on the walls. The shoes for that, they're just decorative and um, I did an order for them just to hang around um, like the doorways and things, but they're nothing, they weren't um, portraits or anything, they're just fun and so once I did that, everybody loved them and I just kept going, kept going and then it evolved into something completely different, <laughs> you know. Most of her shoes focus on jazz and blues artists, so it's sort of a soul to soul project, combining her passions of painting and playing music. I I always love to draw and paint, and um, my husband and I both play music also. That's actually how we met. So that was my focus for a long time, then it kind of shifted into painting. There have been several shifts in Melanie's life. She shifted from playing music to painting, then she shifted from New Orleans to Nashville. The first shift was her choice, giving up guitar strokes for brush strokes. The second shift was caused by Hurricane Katrina. It was kind of a scary place to be after the storm, and. Um, the crime in our neighborhood was pretty bad. And with a three-year-old son, we just thought, this is not worth it. Melanie, her husband Scott, and son Mikey evacuated New Orleans in August of 2005 when the storm hit. She thought the storm would pass and she'd be back with her cats and her artwork in just a couple of days. But Katrina's catastrophe prevented Melanie from stepping foot in her home for more than two months. The first night, we were in the car for 21 hours just to get to Little Rock. That was the only place we could find that had a, a room. So we were in the car with Mikey and Lucy for 21 hours, and at that point we thought, well, you know, we'll spend the night and then see what happens and then go home. But it was, I think, about nine weeks until we were actually able to go home. And when she did return home, miraculously, her two cats were alive and her art supplies intact. And when we were out of town, we were going crazy because we didn't have our art supplies. We didn't even know if we had art supplies still at home. So when we finally got home and got it cleaned up and we were able to just paint again, that was so great. Just life as normal, you know, because both of us, it, it's just really relaxing and centering. And so it was wonderful therapy for sure. Though her home could be salvaged, she and her husband decided it was time to leave the Big Easy. Scott, who's also an artist, had visited Nashville and fell in love with it. Melanie quickly fell in love with it as well. They found the perfect little home in the artsy part of town, and because of all the thrift stores, it was easy to get her feet on the ground with her shoe art. I just look for ones that have a nice, um, a nice area to work on and that aren't too old and damaged, you know, but mostly like the old men's um, slip-on shoes are the best. I think they're called loafers and that loafers and that kind of thing because you have a lot of area. So that's really what I look for is area. Many of the shoes have personality even before Melanie proceeds to paint and bead. And you've got curves and you've got wrinkles where people, because these are old you shoes, so um, sometimes you know have to, like Mississippi John Hurt is very wrinkly in his old age, so I, you know I had the perfect shoe for him. Whereas someone else, you know, like a young Patsy Cline, it's it's just sometimes the shoes you know determine who the musician will be. So I guess you could say if the shoe fits, wear it. I'd like to do people I love. I like to do um, just, there's so many great musicians in the world, you know, and the more you think about it, the more there's just, it's unending, the amount of people that, um, that there are that are just amazing. And then there's also a lot that are special requests for people, and so that's kind of cool. Um, I got a special request for a guy named Barbecue Bob, who I'd never heard of. He's a blues guy from way back. So, you know, through that I learned more about another musician who, I didn't know anything about. One of the most popular shoes that Melanie does is Billie Holiday, famous blues singer from the 30s and 40s. And although she's probably done at least half a dozen of Billie Holiday, there are no two alike. When I do Billie Holiday, I put, you know, real earrings on her or um, flowers in her hair. So I'd change her jewelry up and, you know, change her clothes. 
While turning clodhoppers into collectibles, Melanie is getting to express herself as an artist. She's also keeping alive the memory of those who've made huge strides in the world of music, like James Brown or Elvis. Or some shoes have an air of spirituality about them. She's allowing those old discarded shoes a chance to walk another mile. It's just an interesting canvas, like you said. Every shoe is different and it's kind of self-contained, um, which I really like. While her canvas may be unconventional, her artwork is like eye candy, reminding us that each day must be lived just one step at a time. And you can either stay some shabby shoe in the back of the closet, or you can be reborn into something sensational and leave your own footprint on this earth.